Good news, New Jersey American Water made progress overnight as of about approximately 1.30 Wednesday morning, they were able to get the 24-inch valve shut off. As you can see over here, there is a, they built a coffer dam right there, which allowed the heavy equipment to come in and to get into there to, to shut the valves off. Uh, obviously, you can see the mud and the debris all over the place here, but that's a whole nother story. But more importantly, this will give you a scope on this side of the trestle over here, the scope of the damage now that they were able to dewater. You can see right there, that is approximately the 48 inch pipe there um, that is fed from the uh, millstone plant right here that goes through, that goes, feeds our town and several communities in Union County. Um, this is the culprit right here of what caused everything. This is the 24 inch interconnector pipe between the 60 inch and the 48 inch uh, that, that went, so that's since that went, the 24 went, so there was water coming from the 60 inch and the 48 inch, which created this huge gaping hole uh, currently right here. So these gray conduit lines that you see down here right now, that is the uh, high, uh, high powered electrical lines that are buried underneath here that service a lot of our uh, corporate uh, areas right here now. So they'd be showing up. PSE&G was out here last night. We also have a large, uh, I believe an eight inch gas main that's on the other side over there. They don't know exactly what gave out, but you know, these lines are like, you know, 60 plus years old. So they don't know uh, what happened with the pipe, whether it was just natural fatigue or if it was something else, but that'll be for, you know, concrete experts to figure out uh, why that, that the pipe gave way. But as you can see the road, roadway beds exposed down at least 20 plus feet or more uh, down here at best. So um, Fletcher Kramer's been out here obviously since uh, 48 hours now uh, working. So they have a lot of other different inspection companies coming out here to inspect the area before everything gets start to be rebuilt. So I think once they get the pipe hooked up, the 24 inch back in here, they're gonna be fully probably, I suspect, fully energizing all the, all the pipes, but probably over a uh, period of time because obviously they don't want to bring the pressure back up all at once because it then cause uh, other pipes to burst within the system since you know they haven't been running at full pressure. But as far as the roadway out here, uh, residents can expect at least a couple of weeks, maybe longer because some of the material that's gonna to have to be ordered uh, because of COVID um, naturally has been on back order anyway during normal construction purposes. So it's just a question of how quickly certain supplies are gonna be able, materials are gonna be able to get out here in order to uh, uh, revamp this uh, roadway underneath it here. So we're, we're, um, folks from uh, CME engineering or outside consultants working with our engineers, as well as uh, New Jersey Waters engineers Conrail's engineers, Conrail folks have been out here. You got PSE&G out here. Uh, you got you know both the gas and the electrical division. So you have a full array of companies, uh, utility companies that are out here dealing with this uh, area though. But you know, it's just amazing, even as mayor or just general public, it's just interesting how the confluence of a certain intersection in a community, one community, can really affect the lives of uh, hundreds of thousands of other people in the state of New Jersey. So um, I know most people, you know, you're at your home, you turn your faucet on, you don't know necessarily where the water comes from. All you know, you're able to use it or flush it to get rid of it. And that's why I said before earlier about Build Back Better, um, Infrastructure improvements, just so people know, also calls for upgrade of capital maintenance of these lines. So this is like a secured line here for water, public water for people to drink because everybody knows now you don't want to have to go and get just a case of water every day for your household. So that is why water, power, and sewer are, are critical asset needs of our great country. And that's why there's a big push to in, in, improve a lot of these underground infrastructures. Uh, Fortunately for us, we don't own the water lines under our streets. Uh, that is uh, New Jersey American Water, but we do own the, the sanitary sewer line. So that's part of our, our capital. One of the things we will be doing is spending some of the uh, 
covert relief money on installing new water lines in some of the areas to have New Jersey American Water take care of that because and also to enclose some of the areas of town that do not actually, believe it or not, don't have access to public water. We still have a lot of uh, areas that are on well water, some because they like that, but I want to make sure that you know we do have access to safe drinking water if necessary uh, out there. So we're going to be seeing a lot of capital programs of fixing a lot of the road, water and sewer lines over the next uh, 24 months or so in our town. But yes, this is a total mess out here and hopefully we'll get back to some normalcy within the next uh, 24 hours. I suspect uh, where we're going to be seeing this hooked up sometime today. It's just the question when they're going to uh, re-energize. As you can see right now, you have a uh, wheel loader down here now uh, taking away all the mud that is accumulated. To, probably it's going to end up going to a landfill, I would suspect, if you test it. So. But you can see the scope of the generators on this side to get and the pumps just to get the water out of here. So. Okay, we're out here with Mark McDonough, the president of New Jersey American Water, and stopped by to see the big uh, watering hole here. That's it. Uh, not to be kidding around about it, but you know he's seen firsthand of uh, what you know a 60 and a 48 inch line converging to have a, a pipe break out here, and what what the damage and the interruptions it may have in the customers. So, Mark, do you want to talk to some of the viewership here? In a sure. Better? Yeah, I mean we recognize that this is a significant event, and obviously. It's, uh, you know, as much as we work and as much capital as we put in place to try and prevent these situations, they do happen. I don't want to say they're sort of routine to us because they're not, but there's something we deal with on a, a frequent enough basis to be able to really partner with the city. And that's the key for us. Yeah. Communication, work with the city, work with DPW yeah. to repair these situations as soon as they uh, come on uh, into existence. So um, we pride ourselves in that partnership. Yeah. And we pride ourselves on our ability to deliver the expertise. Um, you know, we have our director of engineering out here. We have our director of operations and uh, the whole team works together to really, you know, deal with a situation like this, which is, as you can imagine, uh, incredibly uh, catastrophic to the road in the area. But we uh, feel like that's the value that we bring to uh, the uh, long term relationship that we have with the city. Now, you were mentioning before, before we're coming on the air that hopefully by tonight uh, with the test results of the latest water samplings that uh, the DEP and your company will be able to lift the, the, the boil water. Um, yeah, is we're hopeful. One of the things that we uh, were able to do because we have redundancy to the system, even though the pipe's still broken, we're able to bring the system back up to pressure and we were able to uh, talk to DEP, do the sampling we needed last night. It takes about 24 hours for those samples to be back. So we're hoping around eight o'clock, we'll read those samples, they'll be clear. And right after that, we'll lift the boil water notice. And then as soon as that, if and when that happens, then obviously we'll let everybody know via social media and news releases, as well as your company. And Absolutely. TV. And uh, I just want people to be patient because this is, uh, as I was talking with Mark before we came on the air, you know, the, the whole infrastructure um, improvements and what I said earlier is that this is what infrastructure improved because you have a lot of very old infrastructure here in this country, whether it's water, sewer, bridges, roads, uh, power lines. Uh, and that's why in order to reinvest back in the country, there's a big push on down in Washington on Capitol Hill to get a bill put out to take care of uh, some of these lines and through capital programs. So something like this may not not happen, you know, by improved capital improvements. You know, one of the things we do with that, those types of infrastructure bills are incredibly important, mm -hmm. but we'll invest about $400 million of our own money this year alone yeah. in New Jersey in our systems. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to be a supplement and a, yeah. a sort of synchronized piece yeah. to the greater investment that the country is going to make overall. So I want to thank uh, Mark McDonough, the president of New Jersey American Water, to come out and take a look at the site. He was up earlier at one of the water distribution sites at, at Little League up saying hello to some of the residents. In, uh, Councilman Rouse and Councilman uh, Kapil Shaw. So uh, thank you for stopping by, taking time out of your schedule to take a look at the, your, your team out here fixing up this hall. So let's well, keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll get everything back to normal here within the next 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you.